Right, uh, good afternoon. So today we're looking at the, the, the last few questions of the November 2020. At this point we have answered paper one and paper two up until question. Paper two we did up until question. Six point something. Nope, 5.4. Okay. So the first question says prove the identity. Definitely you get this in the, you must get this in the exam. To prove the identity, what do we do? We change stand, stand can be written as sine over cos. So the left hand side is going to be sine x over cos x plus cos x over 1 plus sine x. So what do I do now? Find an LCM. What's my LCM here? Cos x into 1 plus sine x. So cos x must be multiplied by 1 plus sine x to get the denominator. So sine x, which is the numerator, must be multiplied by the same to make it an equivalent fraction. Plus, that plus is coming from the cos x. The denominator, which is 1 plus sine x, must be multiplied by cos x, the numerator also by cos x. So we get rid of the brackets, we multiply that out, and then get sine x, plus sine x times sine x is sine squared x, plus cos squared x over cos x into 1 plus sine x. So what do we notice now? Sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to? So it's going to be sine x plus 1 over cos x into 1 plus sine x. So what can happen now? Cancel. You see the cos is in the denominator. So it's going to be 1 over cos x. You say okay, but that is in the same as the, the right hand side. So there we are proven the identity. Okay? <coughs> In question 5.5, I would like to Your attention, please. 11C. Can you please report to room 46, Ms. Fairburn's classroom? 11C to Ms. Fairburn's classroom, room 46. Thank you. 11, what are you guys? Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys are B. You've been B all year, or what? Huh? <laughs> Just for the day, okay. So, in 5.5, the question says, tell the general solution. The general solution of 3 sine x equals 2 tan x. So, to do the general solution here, firstly, tan can change to what? Sine over cos. So, it's going to be 3 sine x equals 2 sine x over cos x. Okay, but naturally, this is over 1, so I cross multiply. So it's going to be 3 sine x equals 2, no, sine x times, uh, 3 sine x times cos x is sine x cos x equals 2 sine x. Now can I divide both sides by sides? No. Why? Because you will be losing a solution. Okay? So you bring this over the equal sign. So it becomes 3 sine x cos x minus 2 sine x equals 0. That's all. Equals 0. So what do we notice now? Sine is common. So we got sine x, I'm leaving it to 3. Cos x minus 2 is equal to 0. So what do I say now? <coughs> Sine is equal to 0 or 3 cos x equals 2. Or 3 cos x minus 2 is equal to 0. Then this work with sine x equal to 0 first. 0, 1 and minus 1 is equal to the one of those. I take it to the graph. That's a sine graph of 360. That's a normal sine x graph. So where is sine x equal to 0? At 0, 180 and 360. But 360 is a repeated solution of? Zero. Okay. So there's two ways I can do this. I can say x is equal to zero. 
plus k times 360 or x is equal to 180 which is the solution here plus k times 360 okay or we know that the solution is happening every 180 degrees so I can write it as 1 as x is equal to 0 plus k times 1 it's either that there or this here it means the same thing alright look at the other side over a bit. Whoops. Okay, for the other side, what do we say? Okay, first, first you divide by 3, then I get cos x equals 2 over 3. So I work my reference end. Mr. Bardin? Yes, miss? Do you have the 11B? Yes, yes miss? Your food is here. Here you go. I'm joking. Here you go. Come on. Just joking. Right. So, people, what do we do now? Arc cos. What's arc cos of 2 over 3? So, arc cos of 2 over 3. Give me 48, comma, 1, 9. Okay, so what question comes to mind at this point? We score which quadrant yes? Which cos? Positive, as you can see that was positive. Alright, so let's go with quadrant one. It's gonna be simply x is equal to 48 comma 19 plus k times 360. Or oh. are you getting to quadrant four? So what's 360 minus 48 comma 1 now? 300 and? Comma 8 what? Plus k times 360. Where k is an element of? Integer. Alright? Do you believe I understand? Any confusion? No. Question 6. <coughs> In question 6, we are, we are told sketch print out the graphs of the function f of x equal to cos x plus q and g of x equal to 2 sine bx for x is an element of negative 60 to 120 degrees. Write down the coordinates of the maximum turning point of g in the given interval. <coughs> but what I'm going to do before I do anything, I'm going to first solve, solve for a uh, for q and b first. Okay. So if you're looking at Q, Q is a horizontal shift of the cos graph. This is your normal cos graph. Remember we went to 120. So that is 180 there. So this is 90. So 120 is approximately here. That's it. So cos X starts in the maximum. One unit up. I don't see it. Do you guys see it? The graph of x of x. I don't see. I can't make the. Oh, the graph is actually moving down. They didn't tell us Q is positive or negative. So this graph is actually moving down a certain degree okay so if if I want to calculate that sorry about that to calculate um, if you're looking at if so you see the, that's the definitely known point to us okay so if of x is going to be you're going to substitute uh, 60 and 0 in you're going to get 0 is equal to to cos 60 plus q. Cos of 60 is half, so q is negative half. Okay? You want to that? 
and then for we sorted. What does that let us? Yeah. Does that let us? Well, if it's not here, you just take it to your class teacher. Okay. But it must go back to the office. Oh, there we go. Okay. So they're going to leave it here, I'm going to lose it, and then they're going to say it's me. And then it's well, friend, what's wrong? Nothing. Now, why are you threatening? Uh, <laughs> why are you threatening her? Why does she look so scared? <laughs> no, you don't. Okay. People, GeoX. GeoX is this graph here. The definite point that we know is this point here of 90 and 2. Not so. But this is the sine graph here, not so. So if you look at the sine graph, the basic sine graph, this point is 90 normally, not so. And 1, that is the sine. But if there's a 2 here, then it would have been 2 like that. Not so. So this is, what is this? 30 degrees. Instead of 90, you've got 30 here. So in other words, you're going to be 90 divided by 30, which is 30. So the B value there is it. Are you all okay with it? No? So we've got 2 sine 3x. So those are the two equations. Alright, so let's see what, what the questions are for us. Okay? First question, write down the coordinates of the maximum turning point of G. Maximum turning point of G is 2. The coordinates, so it's going to be 30 and 2. You all okay with that? Then, the question says, determine the value for x where f is increasing in the given interval. Now, looking at where f is increasing in the given interval, is f increasing or decreasing here? Increasing, increasing till that point. Not so? You know what you notice? Decreasing. It's decreasing from the to the. So, what do we do for the continuous solution? x has to be greater than Negative 60, but it has to be less than 0 degrees. Any confusion there, people? No? Let's look at the next question. And the next one. The next one. The next question. Determine the value of B and Q. So your Q value is negative of. And your B value is? Are you all okay with that? Are you all okay with that? Yes. yes? So what's Q negative of? So the graph is moving down by a, by a half unit. Okay, there we have worked it out. Okay, next. Use your graph to determine the values for x for which. 2 cos x times sine 3x minus 3 minus sine 3x is greater than or equal to 0. So when you see this, what do you notice here? I'm seeing many things. Not so. You're firstly seeing as a common factor here. Common factor of what? Sin. Sine x, which is one of the graphs here. But I get out the common factor, I'm left with 2 cos x minus 1. It has to be greater than or equal to 0. If I divide throughout by your half here, if I divide by half, then this would be side 3x. 2 cos x, we take out, sorry, not divide, dividing by half, dividing by 2. Multiplying it by half. So 2 cos x divided by 2 is going to be cos x. 1 divided by 2 is negative half. So doesn't affect the um, sine 3x divided by 2? You remember it's a factor. So if you've got 2 times 3 times 4, 
and I divide this by 2 and I put it under here then that's going to give you 1 times 3 times 4 which is 12 if I put that under there 2 times 4 is 8 times 3 over 2 2 goes into 8 4 times which is also 12 if I to divide the 4 by 2 2 times 3 is 6 4 times 2 4 divided by 2 is 2 which is 12 so if you divide the first factor, second factor or the third factor by 2 is not going to make a difference you see so what I did was I did it in such a way that it can divide into the into this factor why did I want it to divide, divide into the factor? So it can be looking like a That's the reason why. You understand? So in other words, to us this is sine 3x, which is g of x, times f of x must be greater than equal to 0. Which means to say that it has to be positive. If it's greater than or equal to 0, it has to be positive. Understand? So when is something when we when we multiply two factors, when would it be positive? If one is positive and the other one is positive, or one is negative and the other one is negative as well. So both graphs must be negative or both graphs must be positive. Okay? You guys understand? I must make sure it's not cutting off the so, either both negative or both positive. What do you notice here, starting at negative 60? One is positive, one is negative. When is a graph negative? When it's below the x-axis. There's a y value. That is negative, if it's above, it's positive. So, in other words, both graphs must be on top at the same time, or both must be at the bottom at the same time. From negative 60 till 0, one is on top, one is at the bottom. That's not what we're looking for. From 0 to 60, what do you notice? One is on top, one is at the bottom. Not so? No, both is on top. From 60 to 120, both at the bottom. So it's actually the solution is going from 0 to 1, no, 120. So after you seeing this graph for the first time? Remember that? Yes. So it's from 0 to 120. Not so. We say x is greater than 0, but less than 120. You see as an equal sign then? Are they equal at 0? Yes. yes. So 0 times anything is 0? Yes. Are they, are they equal at 60? Yes. So that is included already. Are they equal at 120? Equal to 0? Yes. One is 0 and one is a value. So 0 times a negative value will always be 0. That is why I mean include that value as well. It's inclusive of. So, yes? So that's awesome. So I don't know where it was you. Um, from the question, you said. The question says, use your graph to determine the value for x which is greater than equal to 0. Mm -hmm. So in other words, I, it is where g of x times f of x is positive. Mm -hmm. You understand all the no? No, sir. I don't understand um, why that's like the way to the question versus the first, the first way you put it. This year. Yeah, you see, uh, well, what I notice here, you see it says use the graph. So how can we fit the graph in here? So we say, okay, by association, we know that sine 3x is coming straight from here. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So what I do is I say, okay, since sine 3x is a common factor, let's take it out and see what we left. So this, this is g of x, that's no problem. So you must try and get f of x here. But if you look at f of x, there's no 2 in front of it. No, uh, in front of the cos. That is why I divide it by 2. If I divide it by 2, it's going to become cos x minus r, which is 
if of it. You understand? So in other words, we if of x times g of x is greater than or equal to z. Okay? Any other confusion here? Yes? Um, the side of x, side of x is yes? Yes? Oh, I see what you're saying. But if you put a 2 here, would it affect me if I multiply by 2? Or what I should have actually done was, I had to take out 2 as a common factor. You see, if I take out 2 as a common factor, it's going to be 2 sine 3x into cos minus 1 over 2 must be greater than equal to which still gives us where f of x times g of x is greater than equal to 0. Okay? Anything else? Thank you. Let's so look at the last question. It says, if the graph is shifted 45 degrees to the right, if the graph of f is moved 45 degrees to the right. Okay, let me just take this off here. Graph of f is shifted 40 degree, 45 degrees to the right. So f of x equals cos x minus half. So 45 degrees to the right, do I add or subtract on my x? Subtract it. Okay? Write down the equation of the new graph. So it's simply y is equal to cos x minus 45 degrees minus half. Okay? Any confusion here? Eh? But move to the right, you, you add, uh, subtract. Move to the left, you add. Okay. So what is the additive inverse effect that that will have on the graph? Okay. Okay, question seven. Tom T stands between two buildings of different heights. He's 23 meters away from building on his left and an angle of elevation between him and the building is 33 degrees. Referring to that angle. The building on the right is 14, he's 14 meters away from which Tom is standing and the elevation of 17 degrees exists between those two. When an angle of elevation is 17 degrees. The distance between Tom and the top of the building TB is 14,64. So TB, which is not on the diagram, is 14,64 meters. Okay. First question. Question says, determine the height of the building A and B respectively. So we're going to look at the height of building B. Let's call this HB and HA. Okay. So in triangle, this is all the, just put the letters here so that you can name the triangle. You don't have to name it, that's how I'm going to do it here. No? But um, in triangle B, T, 
Tomizettine. What do you see here? You've got a right angle triangle. So what is this doing to us? The opposite. Not so. So how can I calculate BD? But think this. Not so. So BD squared equals 14 comma 64. Is that 64? Yeah. Squared minus 14 squared. Pythagoras, no reason required. So it's 14 comma 64 squared minus 14 squared. The square root thereof. So you did 16 instead of 14. 16. No, so you said 16. Okay. So it's 14 comma 64. Oh, yeah, I see now. Thank you. 14 comma 64 minus 14 squared. So they give us that. The square root thereof gives us 4 comma 2 8. 4 comma 2 8 meters. That is very low. That's very high. But anyway, there's 14 comma 2 8. Okay. Because at the door, a door is normally 2 meters. 2.2 there. So a building that is 14, uh, 4 comma 2 is fairly low. Not so? Right. So, the, so that lady, yes ma'am? To make this one point, can you send it to the office please? Okay. So that is the height of building B. Then in the angle, ACT. Again, this is our opposite, and we have adjacent. Can we apply the tags here? No. Not so. So, which trigonometric function is opposite and adjacent? Tan. So, tan of 33 equals AC over 23. Naturally, that's over 1. So, AC times 1 is AC. Tan 33 times 23 is 23 tan 33. Twenty-three, ten, thirty-three. This is fourteen comma nine four. Okay. You all okay with that? Then in question seven point one point two. Determine the distance between Tom and the top of building A. The distance. So in other words, what are we calculating here? We're calculating 80. Not so. And how can we calculate that? By using? I think it is. Not so. So 80 squared, this is for question 7.1.2. 80 squared is equal to 14,96 squared plus 23 squared. So 80, 14,93, right, that answer squared plus 23 squared. The square root thereof is 27,42. 27 comma meters. Okay. Then in 7.1.3, calculate the length of a piece of rope AB, which connects the top of the two buildings. So if you look here, they want you to calculate this length. Okay? But what do we have? We have two lengths and we can calculate the included angle. So which rule are we going to use here? Yes, it's the cos. So let's then say for 7.1.3 ATB is equal to 180 minus 33 degrees minus 17 degrees. 
Why? Because the angle's on a straight line. That's 50, it says 130. 130 degrees. So what do we now say? You remember this angle's on the straight line? We don't need that easily. So AB squared is equal to? It's 27. Twenty-seven comma four two squared plus fourteen comma six four squared minus it's going to go here, but it's now going to be behind the calculator. I'm going to write it at the bottom. Minus two times twenty-seven comma four two times fourteen comma six four cos of 130 degrees. You all okay with that? You all okay with that people? Yes sir. Right. So now we can say that AB squared is equal to. Now punch the whole story in the calculator. It's 27 comma 42 squared plus 14 comma 64 squared minus 2 times 27 comma 42 times 14 comma 64 cos of 130. That gives us an answer of 1,400, 1,482, comma, 25, and the number carries on. The square root thereof, therefore, AB is equal to the square root of that answer, 38, comma, 5 meters. Alright, any confusion here? Any problems here? Yeah? Alright, let's then go to the next question. In 7.2, the diagram below, <coughs> A, uh, BC, BC is equal to uh, CD, which is equal to K. So it's already marked in the diagram. ABC is X. Angle ABC is X. So also mark CAB is Y. You must prove that. The area of triangle, okay, so the area of this triangle, okay. So to calculate the area of a triangle, it's the two sides and included angle. Not so. So the area of this could be two sides. So it's a, um, the area of a triangle is going to be half AB sine C. Okay, I see there's an X plus Y, which is sine X plus Y. Which is this angle here, that is going to be X plus Y. Here. This is 180 minus X plus Y. K squared, so that is in order. Did anybody get the answer? So I will probably write, yeah, yeah, good. It's, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write AC. 
in terms of K and whatever. Okay? So what I'm going to say is that AC, so this is in triangle, ACP. I'm going to say that AC over sine of X is equal to K over sine of Y. So I'm going to make AC the subject of the formula by taking that up. So AC is equal to K sine X over sine Y. Okay. Then I need this angle here. So in angle A, C, D is equal to X plus Y. Why? That is exterior angle of triangle. Okay? So it's X plus Y. Alright, you see this in the world now? So um, the area of the triangle ACD JDB, the area of triangle ADC plus the area of triangle APC. So it's going to be the area of this triangle plus the area of that triangle will give me the area of the whole triangle. Okay? So if I'm going to go with the same triangle first, it's going to be half. AC times CD sine of angle ACD plus so half you don't have to do the step I'll just show you where I'm coming from so it's going to be half AC times CB sine of angle ACB Okay. Which now gives us of what's the length of AC? The length of AC. This is what the story is. It's K sine X over Y times CD, which is K sine of angle x plus 1. Okay? I'm almost sure that the memoir is an easier explanation, but let's first do this. We'll be half AC, same story, which is K sine x over sine y sine y times CB which is K, sine of angle. Now this angle is 180 minus x plus 1. Why sum of triangles? Okay. Let's take the calculator away then. Okay. is that soon to tidy this up here but I did definitely see that the half is a common factor here so this will simplify into what's 180 minus x plus y what does this give us 180 minus x plus y ok let's just simplify so it's going to be k times k k squared so it's going to be uh, k squared sine x sine x plus y over 2y this must be a sine 2 sine y yeah, the, the of the 2 here. plus in the same story but 180 minus is in the second quarter makes the sine positive so it's going to be half. So it's k times k. k squared. Sine x. Sine x plus y. 
and this is all over 2 sine y. That's all. So what do you notice? The denominators are the same. So that would be 2. Am I calculating the right triangle? A, D, C. A, that is the problem. I'm calculating the whole thing. Not so. So I'm calculating the wrong thing. So A, D, C, it's only this part of the triangle that calculate. So it's only that you need there. And this here. Yeah, so let's just erase. I went way past what I needed to do. Okay. So I'm thinking, why is this thing so, so complex? So maths is not so difficult for you guys. No? So that, that is over. Sorry about that. So it's so okay. So what we need to do, we need to get this. This this needed to be done first anyway. So the area of triangle ADC is equal to so ADC is going to be half AC times DC sine of um, AD ACD. Okay, which is now a half times AC, which we worked out to be K, sine X over sine Y, times D, D K, DC, which is K, sine of X plus Y. So that is simply K times K is going to be K squared. And the 2 belongs to the denominator, so it's 2 sine Y. On top we have k squared sine x sine x plus y. And here we go. Okay. Phew, sorry about that. There's actually two um, equal triangles being formed. I realized I was wrong when I had been this, when my answer actually came out to be k squared sine x into sine x plus y over sine x. So the two triangles are the same. And you know, the two should have cancelled. Okay. The majority of the time, all the time, this that, it, that you must prove is actually correct. So you can see if you are right or wrong. Just by not reading the right letters there, my I probably see the right thing. But I calculated the B triangle. Okay. It was possible, but you see all that work that went into it. Okay. And so I was almost convinced that there was an easier way of doing this because I know we won't we won't let you do something like that, to sweat like that in the exam. No? People? Question eight. Yeah, I was sweet. Right, question eight. We are told complete. Geometry. The line from the center of the circle to the midpoint of the chord is Line from the from drawn from the center of a circle to the midpoint of a chord is perpendicular to the chord. The angle subtended by a chord at the center is twice. The angle subtended by the same chord at the circumference. That's it. So that's in order. The sketch below O is the center of the circle. O is the center of the circle, with OM being perpendicular. So OM is perpendicular to AC. The radius of the circle is 5, so that's 5, 5, and so on. BC is 8. BC is 8. The question says, write down with reason the size of BA, BCA, 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 this angle. The angle is going to be? 90 degrees. Why is BCI 90? Why is BCI 90? Angry? See me, sir. People, this has come. 
the second exit you guys. Aren't you ready paper doing the two day step? Yeah. So? Give me a shock. Right. 8.2.2 calculated the end of AM. 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 I'm going to calculate AM. Pythagoras. You would agree with that? But at this point, you can calculate first AC. Not so? So 8.2.2. AC is equal to, AC squared is equal to 10 squared minus 8 squared. Your reason? Pythagoras with angle C equals 90. Remember, we're busy with geometry now. Everything needs a reason. So AC squared is equal to 36. The square root of 36 is 6. So what do you think about the angle C equals 90? No. We had said only angle M is 90. But if you look at this, there's only one angle at C. You understand? But if there's more angles, like yes, M is 1, 2, 3, there's three angles at M. I can just say angle C, I can just say angle A, I can just say angle B. Okay. So it's 6, 1, because, um, what is this, millimeters or centimeters? Whatever it is, okay. So it's already this 6. So what's the length of AM? 3. 3, why? You know me to say perpendicular from center to chord by sixth chord? Perpendicular from center. Perpendicular from center to chord by sixth chord. So that's going to give you. Right, next, determine the, the ratio of the area of triangle. So they're asking with regards to the ratio. So 8.2.3. So it's area of triangle. AOM is to the area of triangle ABC. Okay? So area AOM, AOM. And I would say one is to two. Okay? Why? Because Everything else, and the point here will be evident. Okay? But say we didn't know. Okay? Then I will calculate the area of triangle, so half OM base time perpendicular height, which is AM, is to half ABC, the big triangle. So it's going to be AC times CB. Okay? So it's going to be half. OM, what's the length of OM? We don't know, so we need to work that out first. So I can use my tags to calculate OM. So OM squared is equal to um, 5 squared minus 3 squared, which is uh, 25 minus 9 is 16. The square root thereof is going to give you 4. What could have gone with the fact that it's a midpoint theory? Not so? So that is OM is 4, AM is 3, is 2 and a half, AC 6, times CB which is 8. Okay. I think I was wrong. Divide by half, cancels. 4 going to 4 once, 4 going to 8, twice. 3 going to 3 once, 3 going to 6, twice. So it will be 1 is 2. So I was wrong. It was not half. Okay. I had to go with k squared, which is, which is half squared, which is 4. But that we'll talk about more next time. Okay. People question 9. It's a proof. I have proved all these theorems in a video. Okay. I'll play post uh, the video again in the group. And then you guys just don't open the group. Yes, don't look away now. But I've done this for the grade 12s. The first, all the circle theorems was proved. 
and the grade 12 theorems was proved. So you do not go through the similarity proof and the, and the, and the proportionality proof. You will see the acid grades, grade 12. Okay? But the circle theorems, all these theorems need to be studied for the exam. There are circle theorems proofs that is coming in this exam as well. So go learn it. Okay, so number one, five and four marks. It can go up until 12 marks. People, enjoy the exam and all the best. Okay. So we'll conclude this paper in the first week in grade 12. Okay. Good afternoon.